not making any more land. Uh, you know, it's a wonderful commodity, but there's no more of it being created. In fact, the sea erosion uh, and other aspects, development, for example, actually the land we have available is getting less. So we've got to box clever in the way we use our resources. Uh, we've got to make sure we use them sensibly because ultimately it's a finite amount. And above all, it's the quality of life as well. You know, we all want to live in a nice, clean environment uh, that's healthy for our bodies because we all live a lot older these days. I mean, you know, historically, people would sadly pass away maybe in the early 40s or 50s. Someone born today is, I believe, projected to live to their, well into their 90s, they are then. So the environment that your body requires to live that long lifespan uh, needs to be an environment that obviously is agreeable to the body. As well. So you make a really good point there, kind of about population, about the demands on our population. I was talking to someone this morning before I came here, and they were saying in 1800, for example, the population of Wales was about half a million people. And today, the population of Wales is over 3 million people, it is then. So in 200 years, it's gone up, what, fourfold, fivefold, um, and that is going to continue. Uh, we decided that it would be worth looking at trying to reduce the number of cars coming to and from school, used by the teachers, um, because a lot of the kids, you know, they, they use the school buses and they walk, so quite a lot of the cars are for teachers. Um, so we did a survey to see how many teachers did car share, and then if we could get more teachers to car share, or, you know, or and some teachers cycle to school as well, which is good. Um, so these are the results that we had. Um, all the staff surveys were aware of the benefits of car sharing, or aware to an extent of the benefits. Um, 39 staff members responded to the survey, 9 staff members car share, and of those, 5 car share every day, and 2 more than once a week. An additional 2 teachers said they should car share occasionally. Of those who don't car share, 16 are interested in being matched up to car share. So it, overall it was a good result, but we did we did figure out a lot of the teachers did say um, that uh, maybe they don't car share very regularly because they work different hours of the day, um, which is obviously awkward. Um, Family commitments. Yeah, that kind of thing. So. You know, we're, we're trying to work on getting more teachers to car share, but obviously we have to bear in mind that, you know, people work different hours of the day and stay on and be very good and stuff like that. Okay. What about the myself a lot of people walking on the road and um, it's a fairly simple basic job just to cut the hedges back so we've um, written a letter to uh, the residents who you know whose hedges they are and hopefully they'll cut them back. Why is it? It's not as mm. white as people think so walking in twos is if you're pushing it for a three but half the time you're walking 
next to someone, and then when there's the, at the hedges, because I know when I walk past there, it's file, work, file and down, and then it's gets cobbed up by people, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, I've had you know, complaint about that. Like, um, the, the lady sent a complaint in, and we had an assembly on it that apparently people were walking in like threes from like going to or leaving school, and she had to walk on the road. Um, also, the water fountain on the ground floor of A Block has been damaged and the leak water which caused the flooring to rise. Um, Mr Walters suggested that one of the water fountains could be replaced with a chilled water dispenser like the one in the canteen. Um, this would be better than a water fountain because the water would be filtered and um, chilled, so we need it. So we thought that by reception and the toilets was a good place to put it because there's lots of staff by there and reception's always there so it would not be vandalised. And then it's also close to electricity to chill the water and like do everything with it and filter. Um, but he said we couldn't put it down by P or in any other block because he said it would just get vandalised again and it would be ready. <coughs> after it's um, half term. The, the, and that's a genuine point though, because down where you're talking about, you know the way the current one is yeah. down outside, I don't know if it's right outside the D&T room next to the yeah, school yeah, toilets. Okay. I mean, what's interesting for me is when I leave school sometimes far too late at night, um, and we've got, you, know, you lot have all cleared off, um, and we've got community people in, it isn't just about saying, it, it, you know, you need to think yeah. about wider than just our school day mm -hmm. as well, because quite a bit of the wear and tear, damage, you know, I don't know if it's vandalism because the bottom line is when lots of people are using lots of things, they get broken. Mm -hmm. um, so we do need to think carefully about where those things go. I think the one in the county and one in A Block where, where, you, where Mr Waters has said, uh, you know, has recommended is probably about it. Mm -hmm. What are you saying about one by reception? And there is one currently yeah. there, but mm -hmm. it's not working? No. They, they, they turned off the power apparently because I went to try and get a drink and I asked reception and they said I was yeah. cut off the power. Um, I did that as well because they cut off the power because with the problem it wasn't, you had to pull it up mm. yeah. to switch it off and not many people, because it's just a sign and you just go straight there, just focus on the water and then you just leave. You don't, you think oh it's just going to switch off but it didn't and then I think some of the teachers got really annoyed because they just saw it just always running. There's little ball bins in them apparently yeah. inside mm -hmm. and the ball bins wear out and that's, they do cost us a hundred and yeah. pounds plus labour to replace them. Since I've been here we've replaced them but yeah. personally I think the, the model of the machine, you know, the machine itself then is not fit for, for the purpose we need so that's why Mr Walters is looking at number one replacing that with something different um, and something that's far more robust. Because the one in the canteen I don't it might have broken down once since I've been in Calgary, yeah. but that's it. Yeah. So that's what we're looking at. Yeah. Yeah, because of course we're on the water fountain. Uh, yeah, about the water fountain will just stay on. And um, the good thing about the um, water <coughs> dispenser in uh, the canteen is as soon as you move something away from it, it automatically knocks off to yeah. the sensor. And I think that's quite, quite clever. One thing I very much like about the water fountain in the canteen is the fact I can get my bottle under it, yeah. which I can't Just do with the water fountains anywhere else. No. So it is a bit stressful, and I do think. Is the individual buying into that change? If you actually force people to do something, you find they push against it and they actually kick back, and you don't make the progress. And so, hearing all the great ideas you've got, but above all, the detailed knowledge that. I mean, that's the one thing that's really impressed me. Each and every one of you has shown a detailed knowledge of the subject that you've talked about and a passion to make sure that you can correct some of the wrongs you see and then drive forward the project you've bought into. So it's a credit to you all, it's a credit to the school, and it's a credit to your parents as well. Isn't it? So thanks for taking the time to see me this afternoon. I've learned a hell of a lot, um, and I really appreciate it. And if you ever want to contact me on anything, just go into the Assembly website and put the address on there and drop us a note if you want to.